I first wanted to welcome up our admissions team. So come on up, guys. Give a hand for our admissions team. second for me to tell, as I introduce them, my favorite thing about each of them. So I'm a little nervous I've been a blank when I get to one of them and they're going to hate me forever. Uh, so, let's start. Andrew Thorne, he is our... He is our Assistant Director of Admissions. Um, he is a diehard Philadelphia sports fan. I don't love that about him, so I'm not going to I'm a diehard Atlanta sports fan. Um, I love that he revolves his whole day around what is he going to eat next. <laughs> He's always thinking of his next meal. I love that guy. Alright, next. Uh, <laughs> William Inlow. Will is one of our admissions counselors at TFC. He recruits largely in the metro Atlanta area, northwest Georgia. So if you're from there, you work with William. What I like most about William is he's really good looking. That's I think it's what he <laughs> It works well when he travels on the road and he's attractive with TFC. Um, alrighty, next we got Corey Lofton. He is the funniest person I know, I think. I think that's what I like most about for it. Uh, alrighty, Taylor Keen. We call her Horse Girl because she loves horses. Um, and her passion for horses, I think, is what I love most about her. If you can tell, I have none of this planned. Um, Alright, uh, she's also a missions counselor, recruits a lot of our transfers and out of state students. Lauren Banks. Um, she is your fearless leader for this whole event. She has organized everything that we've done. Uh, she is the creative, she is the brain, she is the vision behind everything we've done. So big hand for her. That is my favorite thing about her. Brooke Beasley. Brooke is our front office manager. She is graduating in May, so you can get jobs here before graduating. Um, my favorite thing about her is that she is my girl. She, uh, <laughs> I recruited Brooke Beasley uh, when I was a admissions counselor, so that's pretty cool that we've been able to watch her grow and develop, and now she's working full time for us, so that's really cool, and it's exciting for us. Uh, Donovan Smith. <laughs> He's got a daughter, Kylie, and that's my favorite thing about her. <laughs> yeah, she is the cutest thing in the world, and that is. Oh, yeah. um, so, everybody give a hand for our business. Today. All right, and now really what I was brought up here to do was to introduce our president, Dr. Bob. Everybody, welcome. Now, my favorite thing about him is that he is an amazing boss. Sucking that. Man, I'm telling you. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> hey, welcome to TFC. That you are here. Let me just greet you. Some of you I've had a chance to see before. Uh, moms and dads, I just want you to know that my undergraduate years were the best 10 years of my life. <laughs> now, they're, they're, see, they're thinking tuition. I'm, I'm messing with you. All right, who came from the greatest distance? Yell it out. Who thinks they came from the greatest distance? Colorado. California. California. Where's California? <laughs> okay, where in California? Okay? Next. Can anybody beat that? New York. Okay, New York. New York City? Cairo. Okay, all right. Where else? Stop. Now you're making it up. Is it you really from Alaska? Wow. Man. That's good, yeah. People are just making stuff up to see, to see how far they can get. Hey, well, listen, we are so glad to have you. And, you know, anybody nervous about college? Thinking, what are you going to major in? Yeah. And true, true, 
story here. In my undergraduate years, I changed majors six times. I could not figure out what I was going to do. My parents were having a stroke because every time I changed majors, I had to stay a little longer. But um, I want you just to relax about majors. You don't need to worry about that. Those things end up happening, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute on all those majors. So what do you want to be? What do you want to be? A pastor. Thank you for at least one courageous voice. Thank you. What do you want to be? Open to where Jesus leads you. What else? A CEO. Well, you're ready to roll. Any any particular kind of company? No? What else? A photographer. Music major. If you're a music major, what do you want to do? Worship leader. Alright? What else? Let me hear some more of your career choice. A photographer. Photographer. Excellent. What else? Nursing. Nursing. What else? Boy, you guys have a lot of stuff going on. And you know what? I want to congratulate you because those are all really good things. And I think uh, one of the one of the one of you summed it up real well. Also, where is God leading? Where is God pointing you in all this? Let me take you to our our motto. What is the motto for Cole Falls College? <laughs> Developing character with intellect, right? So it's two prong. Developing character, and when we talk about character, we're talking about developing godly character with intellect. You see, when you come to college, you have to learn something. That's the intellect. That's your discipline. That's learning about nursing. That's learning about music. It's learning about ministry. It's learning about whatever it is you're studying. But you also need to be working, as all of us need to be working on, our character. So I'm going I'm to say this to you. Sometimes we ask the wrong question. We say, what do we want to be? When the question really is, who do we want to be? Because when you look at the who you want to be, that's when God really begins to use you. You see, there are colleges all over America that will train you to be a nurse or a photographer or a music major. But there aren't many colleges across America that will help you develop godly character and combine that with what you're studying. And when those things come together, God has a powerful way of making things happen in your life. So over the course of this weekend, I'm going to ask you to do something for me. One, I want you to know, and you may, you may not believe this, but you are not here by accident. You may be sitting here wondering how you got here, but you are not here by accident. God has you here this, these, for these couple of days for a reason. So tonight, tomorrow, the time you're on campus, will you just take some time and keep your, keep your spirit open to what God might be saying to you? Because I guarantee you in a crowd this size, God is going to speak to somebody about what he wants you to do, about college, where you should go, about what you should major in, maybe about relationships that you're in. So be listening tonight for what God has for you. You found yourself in a very special place. I think it's one of the best Christian colleges in America. So enjoy the next couple days. And remember, God has something for you. So be listening. Deal? Deal. Welcome to TFC.
join us as we sing this next song.
coming soon, Lord. You're coming so very soon. We are so excited to just be with you forever. To be in fullness with you, Lord, our Father. Lord, I pray that our prayer here on earth is that we praise you all the day long till that day comes, Lord. We'll praise you for all that you've done in our lives and your great faithfulness shown here on creation, Lord. We are so excited for the redemption of all things. Lord, I pray that we can just have our hearts open right now this morning. Lord, you are here. You've always been here, Lord. So open our eyes right now to who you are. In your name we pray. Hello, hello, hello. Give it up for the band, TFC Band. Someday, you too can be up here doing my favorite. Hey, my name's Alan, and I rolled on the campus uh, this afternoon about 2.30 with my smoking hot wife and my son. And uh, here's, here's what I decided. Because I've not been on like a Christian college campus in a while, right? So... I, I, I just walk around, watching some of you, you know, I know some of you are college students, a lot of you are high schoolers, I'm going, Christian colleges are dangerous, y'all. Do you, you understand this? Like on many levels, Christian colleges are dangerous. Let me explain this. So in 1986, I was a junior in college, and I was a little bit like, like Adam out of Genesis, and so what I mean by that is... You know, in, in Genesis, it says that Adam was like naming the animals, but no suitable helpmate was found. Remember this? So like when I was a junior in college, 1986, I, I could name all the couples like Greg and Lori and Matt and Sarah and Scott and Linda, but no suitable helper was found. Are you with me so far, right? <laughs> so, uh, so, but here's what happened. Like the Lord showed up. Can I get an amen to that? The Lord showed up. And so did Sherry Sue McCracken at home. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen, listen. Christian colleges are dangerous, y'all, because Sherry Sue McCracken hit campus with a bunch of other freshmen, just college babes. I think I got a picture of some college babes from 1986. Now watch this. Look at the big hair on the top, like, left-hand corner. That... That was Sherry Sue McCracken. And then when I saw her, I just, if I got within like 10 to 15 feet, I would do something like this. I'd be like, <laughs> My friend would go, dude, are you speaking in tongues? I'm like, <laughs> dude, you're speaking in tongues. I'm like, no, no, no. Right? Like, it's Sherry Sue McCracken. So listen, I did what every mature junior in college would do. I stalked her. <laughs> I just dogged her. I mean, everywhere she was. So I found out she played oboe in the Winds of Praise Orchestra at our college. And so, and so there she is. And listen, I was like that. I was that guy. I was the creepy guy sitting in the back, just like looking at Sherry Super Cracking, right? Just stalking her. Now, here's what happened. I'm telling you all, Christian colleges, it's, it's dangerous because one night, and it was December of '86. It was cold outside. It was snowing in Cincinnati, where I went to a Christian college. And I walked up to President's Hall, and nobody was there, and I was walking down the hallway, suddenly, angelic as she was, she comes bounding through the door, guess who it was? <laughs> Sherry Sue McCracken. <laughs> and, and Sherry Sue McCracken was like, coming my way, right? Like, and I just bought this brand new white wool coat, and she was coming within that 10 to foot, 15 foot range. And so I started speaking in tongues. How do you do that? How do you do that? Right? Like, listen, I was such an idiot. And I did not know what to say. I didn't know what to do. So uh, here's what I did. I just blew in my ears. Like, that's all I knew what to do. I just kept blowing in my hands. Because other than that, all I could do is speak in tongues. How do you do that? How do you do that? Right? So after about a few minutes of that weirdness... Sherry Sue McCracken just was like, whatever, and started walking the other way. Now, here's, here's what I did. Listen, I was studying to be a pastor 
but I wasn't dead. Are you with me? And she, listen, what I discovered was Sherry C. McCracken was just as beautiful walking away as she was coming. You understand? <laughs> listen, I told you, I was studying to be a pastor, but I wasn't dead. You see, you with me, right? So, so what happened was now she's, you know, she's 15 feet away, she's 20 feet away, she's 30 feet away, and I'm just staring. I'm just like, whoa, do you have, you know, do you have fries with that shake? I know, I know, it's a Christian college, I know. It'll be my last time to ever speak at Tacoma. Listen, and here's what happened, here's the dangerous part. So I'm watching her walk away, and suddenly, in my gawking, she turns around. <laughs> what? She catches me. And she said, by the way, nice jacket. <laughs> so let me just do this real fast. So nine months later, we are engaged. Here's a picture. <laughs> Nine months later, we are engaged. Here's the picture. Nine months, nine months later, here's the picture. Yeah. And nine months later, we are married. Can I get an amen to that? 33 years later, I have four kids, two sons-in-laws, and one dog. And here we are. How about that? Now listen. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you. You have set foot on a Christian college, and it is dangerous. Are you with me? How many are willing to be a little bit dangerous? <laughs> Watch these two right here, okay? Now, listen. Here's what I want to do. How do you figure out... Parents, hang with me. Just hang with me. I'm coming. How do you figure out how to pick the right college? Here's what we know about uh, American juniors and seniors. 65% of you don't know what the heck's going on. 65% of you do not know where to go, do not know where to study. 65% of American juniors and seniors are really confused. So what I want to do is try to give you a little clarity and, and give you a key to choosing the right college. I'm not saying it's TFC, it might be. I'm just going to give you the key to whatever college it is and you choose the right one. Now, how many college students are in the room? Just if you go to TFC, look at this. Here's what we know about you. Statistically, American college students, 61% of you are so stressed out. Wait, not at, not at Tacoma though, no. Listen, 61% of American college students are so stressed out that 61% of American college students are thinking about seeing a counselor. So what I want to do for you tonight is give you the key of how to make sure that your college experience is the best that it can be. So if you're a high schooler, I want to give you the key of picking the right college. If you're a college student, I want to give you the key of making sure this is the best college experience ever. Now, if you have a Bible, pull it out. If not, watch the screen. Because we're going to go to a text. I'm going to try to make my points by looking at the baptism of Jesus. You okay with this? All right, so now watch this. This is Luke chapter 3, starting from verse 21. And you, you know, this is familiar territory, but let me pull out some nuggets here. When all the people were being baptized, so this is, you know, wild and woolly, John the Baptist, and he's in the Jordan River. Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven opened. And now what? We stop right here. We go, why in the world was Jesus baptized? Like, what did he need forgiveness of sins for? What did he need to repent and turn around for? And we're asking these questions because we see Jesus baptized. And then we read verse 22 and it says, And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. Watch this. The voice said, You are my son. And I, I, I love you. In fact, the Greek says, you are my beloved. You're my son and you're my beloved. And with you, I am well pleased. And here's what a good, good father just did. A good father said, I will give you all the approval and the acceptance that you need from me. A good, good father, just before Jesus begins his ministry, gave him this solid identity. You're my beloved. I love you. You're my son. I'm well pleased with you. And listen, before Jesus did anything, this is really good for you to pay attention to. Before he did anything, he cemented his identity with his father. Are you following this so far? You might know what happens next. Jesus is baptized. He grabs onto this identity. The Father is pleased. Listen, it, if you 
grab onto any approval or acceptance other than from your heavenly father, then you just grab onto an idol, my friend, and it will not last. Jesus grabs onto this approval and acceptance from the heavenly father and immediately goes out into a desert where Satan tempts him. Now watch this. This is chapter 4, starting at verse 3. Look at the strategies of Satan because it will be the same thing for you. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Watch this. The devil says to Jesus, if you are the son of God. How many know what he just did there? He just tried to undercut his identity. If you're the son of God. You think you're the son of God? You think you gained approval and acceptance? If you are the son of God. Listen, why don't you do something relevant here? Why don't you do something that makes sense? Like turning stones into bread because you're hungry. And Satan will do that all day long. He'll just try to get you to do something to forget your identity. Are you with me on this? And he does it again. Watch this. Verse 9. He does it again. You know, he leads him up to the, the temple mount in Jerusalem. He says, if you are the son of God, you think you've grabbed onto identity. You think you've grabbed onto ultimate acceptance and approval. If you are the son of God, why don't you throw yourself down from her? Why don't you do something spectacular? And it's the ploy of Satan all day long to get us busy, to get us doing, do something relevant, do something practical, or do something spectacular, anything to get you off your identity with your father. Are you following me the so far TFCers? Now listen, a guy by the name of Parker Palmer, he wrote this great book called Let Your Life Speak. Listen to this, I love this. He says, before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. Did you catch that? Before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. And I would say that your life, if you're a Jesus follower, is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the... So your life is Him. Listen first of what He might have you to be. Or you listen, before you say, I want to be a doctor, a teacher, a pastor, a musician, or whatever it is, listen to that voice inside me. Sometimes, this is so weird, when I preach, can you believe this? When I preach on Sundays, people actually take notes and write things down that I say. Is that not weird? Here's what I think they should do. As I preach on Sundays, I think people should write down what the voice inside of them is saying as I'm preaching. You see the difference? You don't need to write down anything I say, but man, if that voice, if you listen, the voice is the Holy Spirit, the voice is Jesus, the voice is your imago Dei, your image of God speaking inside of you. Listen to that, listen to that, listen to that. But listen, I know this college stuff gets, it just gets weird, does it not? How many have ever done social media with your parents before? Anybody ever do this? Does that get weird for you all? When you're, does it, have you ever posted something and parents jump in and do? I mean, uh, so I got a couple examples. Watch this. This is this is Elizabeth who writes, "My parents, do you see that? My parents have been married for 27 years today. No big deal." And so, uh, Dad jumps in and says, "27 years marital bliss, 19 years of disappointment with a daughter who can't spell parents." How about that? Right? Like, listen. At a certain point, you know, parents just don't need to do social media, right? But let me show you a couple more. Watch this. Here, here's a kid who's, who's just trying to be thoughtful. Look, I mean, he's just trying to be very reflective. And he says, maybe it's not always about trying to fix something wrong. Maybe it's about starting over and creating something better. And then mom says, that's why you have a younger brother. What? 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 Let me give you, let me give you, what's this? This, this one, this one cracks me up. So, so here's Mr. Thug, right? And in fact, um, a friend says, man, dude, straight up thug. And then the guy says, thugging it up in the way double N, um, ha ha, which is a really bad reference. And, and then somebody else says, man, I'd hate to cross you in a dark car park. And then his mom says, I love this. Is that Mr. Pickums in the background of your picture? <laughs> A stuffed pig in the background, right? I love that. I love that tough guy, right? Listen, my mom, my mom, pray for me, because my mom is on Facebook 24-7. She is 84 years old. 
and she lives on Facebook. And listen, listen, here's what she does. She loves when the birthdays just pop up because she can just wish people happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, look, there's one happy birthday. And listen, I want you to see how my mom wishes everybody happy birthday. She will say, happy birthday, Susie. May God keep on preparing you for a beautiful birthday in heaven. <laughs> right. But my mom, you can't say that. That's not a birthday wish. That's a death day wish. <laughs> This is just weird. Now, picking a college, figuring out how to make your college experience the best it can be can be weird, so I need help, right? I need three volunteers, and I have three shirts to pull you up here. Three TFC uh, t-shirts. I need, here's what I need. I need one college student. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm gonna ask you to do yet. Jeff. I need, I need, Or you, Joseph. So, uh, listen, um, I need one college student that you know exactly what you want to be, do, like you're getting ready to graduate, and you want to be successful. You want to be red shirt right there? Come here, come here, you're a college dude? All right. Now, I need two high schoolers, male and female, two high schoolers, that you're kind of knowing what you're going to do. You're, you're like, you're pursuing success, like, all right, success. You know what sex, success is going to be about? <laughs> Now, I assume, um, hey, hey Lauren, stand up, stand up, stand up. This is my daughter Lauren, give her a nice round of applause, right? So, uh, she's graduated TFC, so I'm, I'm a TFC. If these t-shirts don't fit, they can exchange them, right? Alright, so which, which, here, I'll just give you that, you guys can fit in. Oh no, don't give her the black one, don't give her the black one. You're cutting into my message time here. So listen, what? Come on here and face your audience. Come here. Come here. Come, what are you doing back here? Quit doing this. Okay. What? Let, let's project out to when you're like 58 years old. It's, it's not that old. <laughs> Guess how old I am? 58. <laughs> Let's project out to when you're really old. What, and just, I'd say one word, what will you have that will prove that you're successful? What, what will your success bring you, okay? Your name is? Jeff. What do you want to do with me? Uh, well, not a what always, more of God who told me, and I can't argue anymore. <laughs> so what did you just tell me? <laughs> Worship, worship. Okay, okay, good, good. That's good, that's good. What, what, what do you want to do? Um, pastor, pretty much the same. Pastor. All right, all right, we'll talk. Okay, so, what do you want to do? An author of books. Watch this. Worship leader, pastor, author. Now, I want you to project out. Wow, you, you, you're a 58-year-old worship leader. <laughs> what would success look like? Absolutely nothing. You're, dude, you're like too deep for me, right? <laughs> you're a pastor, you're 58 years old. What would success look like career-wise? What would success look like? Come on, just, just take a shot. You don't have to be, you know, Mr. Sunday School up here. What's it look like? How big is your church going to be? I'm sorry. Talk to me. How, how many books are you going to sell? Thousands. Thousands? Yeah. How about, how about, how about, what's your name again? Rachel what? Rachel Hort, written by Rachel Hort, New York Times best-selling author of millions of books. Let's just say, because you guys, I know you're more spiritual than me, okay. Let's say the church you lead worship at. Dude, it's like you're in Australia with hill songs, okay? Dude, Andy Stanley retired and you took his place. All right? So there's thousands of people you're leading worship, thousands of people you're teaching, and you're a, you're a New York Times bestselling author. 
If you got all of those things, could those things become idols? Very easily. If you Jen? want to whatever you're given, then we'll wind up making all of them. Great, yes. Could those things become identity? Now watch this. If you gained all of those things, dude, you're Andy Stanley's follow, follow up person, you are Hill Songs, you have sold a million copies, all that's taking place, and you lose those things. If that was your identity, would that destroy you? If that was your identity, would that destroy you? If that was your identity, would that destroy you? Do you, understand, do you understand what we're talking about here? Like there, there's stuff of life that many of you are trying to choose right now. What I want to do, what I want to be, what I want to grab onto, what successful look like. And if you're not careful, if you get everything, they'll become idols. If you lose everything, your life could be destroyed if your identity is not firmly based on Jesus Christ. You with me so far? Give these people a nice round of applause. Right? Thank you. Watch this. My daughter, uh, her name, I have three daughters, and uh, my youngest daughter, her name is Morgan, and she'll be 21 in July. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Morgan, I mean, I stopped helping her with homework in fourth grade. <laughs> she, like, she, she's brilliant, and so she was brilliant in math and science and just like everything, and so. As she got older, she, she graduated top of her class, huge high school in Cobb County, Georgia, close to Marietta. And so everybody around her was saying, oh, Morgan, you should be an engineer. Oh, Morgan, you should apply to Georgia Tech. Oh, Morgan. And you know what dad said? I said, oh, Morgan, you should go to Georgia Tech. Oh, Morgan. And because I would have loved, and I was thinking, man, I, I could have an engineer for a daughter. Like, I could have a daughter that would graduate Georgia Tech. Like, oh my gosh, this is great. There were all these voices swirling around Morgan. So she went to Georgia Tech, got accepted. She killed it. She did one year. She made the dean's list. Halfway through, she said, Mom, Dad, what would you say if I told you I didn't want to be a mechanical engineer? Deep inside, I'm going, what? What? <laughs> Outside, I'm going, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> she said, you know, I just, I just don't think I want to be an engineer. All the voices around her were saying, be an engineer, be an engineer, be an engineer. You're great with math, you're great with science. Everybody around her, including dad, was saying, be an engineer, be an engineer, be an engineer. Until she started listening to that life voice inside her that said, you're creative. You're artistic, like you love little kids. Why don't you think about being a teacher? So she dropped Georgia Tech and is now on a pursuit of becoming the greatest teacher the world has ever seen. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Parker Palmer says, before you tell your life what you want to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. Listen, vocation. Vocation is all about listening. In fact, the word vocation from its Latin form means voices. So the question is, what voices will you listen to? What voices that are surrounding you will you listen to? And our ego gets in the way. Our ego gets in the way of listening to the right voice because our ego will say, what will you do to make a lot of money? What will you do to be important? What will you do to become famous? And I want to take you back to the baptism of Jesus. Now watch this, watch this. Jesus is baptized, and the Father says, you are my beloved. I'm well pleased with you. You're my son. Now watch what Jesus did for us. This is the power of the gospel. Jesus. Jesus takes his identity, nails himself to the cross, gets rid of his own identity so we can have it for ourselves. You see that? Jesus, what he does for us, he does in us. So because he goes to the cross, he says, the very identity that my father gave me, I'm now giving you. So you are the beloved. So you are the redeemed. So you're saved. So you're bought. So you're chosen. So you are a new creation. Listen to this voice. Listen to the voice of Jesus because Satan is going to come quickly behind you, especially when you find your desert. And Satan's going to go, if... If you think you have this identity in Christ, why don't you prove it? Why don't you do something? Why don't you do something spectacular? Why don't you get busy? Do, do, do. Listen, what Satan will try to trick you with is he will try to get you to do stuff for Jesus, but never with Jesus. And that is a big honking uh, difference. Now watch. 
high schoolers, the key to choosing your college, here it is, ready? The key to choosing your college is this, go to a college where you can listen to the voice of Jesus. Wait a minute, that was a Billy Graham moment. That should have, that should have been, you know. Wait, 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 no, 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 we gotta do this right. Do you hear me? The way, the, the key, and I'm expecting a Billy Graham moment here. Are you ready for this? Like, like put stuff down unless you're holding a small baby. Just, just get ready. Right? Just get ready for this. Billy Graham moment in, inside TFC. Listen, the key to choosing a college is for you to go to a college where you can listen to the voice of Jesus. Some of you are going to choose poorly, <laughs> just like I did. I went to Eastern Kentucky University my, my first year out of high school because I was running from my parents. I was running from my parents' divorce. I was running from God. And it was the worst year of my life. I mean, you can choose a college where it will be the opposite of that. You can choose a college where you won't listen to anybody's voice but yours. And I'm telling you, the key to choosing the right college is to find a place where you can hear the voice of Jesus. Do you hear me? And if you are a college student, what's the key for you to have the best college experience ever? Here it is. Make sure that as you're going through your college, that you're spending time with Jesus instead of just doing stuff for Jesus. And I know all about that one too. Because I went uh, to a Bible college and you can blow through your theology classes and you can blow through your Acts classes and you can blow through your gospel classes and you can blow through your practical ministry classes. Listen, you can do a lot of stuff for Jesus and little with Him. Before you tell your life what you want to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. Listen for the voice of Jesus. And what Paul says to us, listen, watch the screen. This is Ephesians 2.10. Paul says, for we are God's workmanship. Look at this. The word handiwork or workmanship in the Greek is poema. And it means poetry. Y'all, what we are, 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 we are poetry in the hands of God. And he's writing each one of our stories. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Yes, we're supposed to do stuff, but not until we have our identity cemented in him. We are poetry created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He has our lives laid out, y'all. He has the poetry. The Bible says ordained before we ever breathed our first breath. And it's written and it's laid out. And he tells us, now you just have to listen for this. Now you just have to ignore the other voices and listen to my voice that's already inside of you. Become poetry. Who wants to be the next, ste next Steph Curry? Anybody? Who wants to be the next Steph Curry? Who wants to be the next LeBron James? Anybody? Who wants to be the next Lauren Daigle? Anybody? Who wants to be the next John Chris, Christian comedian? Who wants to be the next Andy Stanley? Anybody? The next John Piper? The next Martin Luther King? Anybody? Who wants to be? Just tell me. What do you, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Just tell me. And I will pray against that. And I will pray against that. And I will pray against you becoming anybody but whom the Lord has designed you to be. Listen, one poet wrote, if you're here unfaithfully with us, like if you're here and you're trying to be somebody else, then you are causing terrible damage to all of us. If not, if you're not being the poetry that God has already written, uh, so, so, let me say this quite seriously. Um, I've been in ministry for 33 years. And last year was one of those years. Um, four of my good friends died of cancer. And they should have never died. I mean, they were just too young. Uh, and then we started a second campus in Douglasville, Georgia. That did a lot of work. Uh, and then we're trying to move our current campus from Smyrna, 3.5 miles west. And that's taking a lot of work. And City Hall voted it down. And that was just a mess. And then one of my best friends is going through like a personal crisis as I'm trying to help him through that. And then my mom comes down with stage four lymphoma cancer. So at the end of last year, I just, I wasn't feeling anything. Like I was just numb. I wasn't laughing. I wasn't crying. I was just kind of going through the motions. And I, I you know, 
quickly identified that I was going through classic burnout. So I took a two-month sabbatical. And in the sabbatical, sitting silent, listen, sitting silent, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, listen, Alan, you have done, and if you could get this before you even start, Alan, you have done 33 years of ministry doing stuff for me. But you've done so little with me. And he said, just be quiet, just be still. Like, just be quiet. Just listen to me. You're always busy. You're always doing. Quit trying to do stuff for me and just be with me because my work on the cross has already been done. Right? This thinking helps you choose a college. Do you understand that? Choose a college where you can listen. This, this thinking helps you make sure your college career goes really well because, because you don't want to just do stuff for him. You want, you want to be with him as you run through college. And I would tell you, this thinking affects the whole of your life. There's a college student that walked into our church. Her name was Lizzie. And, uh, I mean, she's just this bubbly, effervescent, like, I mean, you're like, who is this? Nobody can be this happy. But it wasn't happiness. It was joy. Who is this? And then we heard her story. Because she had learned how to listen. And she needed this. Watch her story. Watch this. My family, right back here with me, but I also know that like God brought me through that for a reason. Um, but I also know that like God brought me through that for a reason. I'm still trying to figure out some of those reasons. Life growing up for me, I grew up in a small town in Kentucky. I, um, I grew up with three younger siblings, so I was the oldest. I had um, two younger brothers and a younger sister. Um, we were fortunate enough to be raised in a Christian home, so we went to church pretty much every Sunday and every Wednesday, pretty much whenever we could. Um, I was really close to both my mom and my dad and my siblings. We were all really close. Um, we would spend a lot of time together, and um, we were all just really close. I actually, I would say that I really sought out and really respected my parents' opinions, and I really wanted to please them all the time. I was, I've always been a rule follower, and I, I was growing up, too. A lot of times growing up, we had family board game nights, and we would all play together, and we all got along. Um, didn't matter if you were the youngest sibling, which my, or my 12-year-old sister was the youngest, or one of the brothers in the middle, or being the oldest when I was like 19, and we would still, I would come back and we would have board game nights. I actually moved to Rome, Georgia to go to Berry College, and I majored in early childhood education because I wanted to be a teacher. So moving down to Georgia, kind of transit, that was that transition from going to Kentucky to Georgia where I was completely on my own. So it was February 14th, 2015. It was my senior year of college. And um, I was walking around campus at Barry when I got the call from the campus police asking me to come to the campus police station. So immediately I drove my car over to the campus police station and they had me sit down and wait until the dean of students and the chief of police uh, for the campus police got there. Um, when they got there, they sat me down and. Um, and they told me that my mother, father, and sister were killed um, back home in Kentucky by my 16-year-old brother, Jason. They were killed on February 11th, and he had fled the state, and he was caught just because he was speeding, and he was immediately gunned down. Of course, I want my family right back here with me, but I also know that like God brought me through that for a reason. Um, I'm still trying to figure out some of those reasons. This isn't something that I'm going to just get over tomorrow. It's not, this is not something that's just going away. Um, something I'm learning every day is that you can't just put a bow on a situation like this. I'm going to be struggling with this loss for the rest of my life. I'm going to be struggling with the anxiety. And that's okay because God's going to be with me me every step of the way. He never left me alone then and he's not going to leave me alone as I um, mourn their loss. The only reason I can get through all of this is because God, <laughs> he's done so much um, for me and through me. I feel like at the end of the day, the only thing I have left is hope. Throughout this entire thing, I felt like God was the focus. God has to be the focus. There was no way I would 
get through any of this without holding on to the hope that God has given me. Listen to me. <clears throat> being still, being silent, uh, hearing the voice of Jesus saying, you're my beloved, I'm pleased with you, I love you. And that works really well in choosing a college. It works really well in making sure ex your college experience goes the best as possible. And it works really well when life is blown all to hell. Do you understand that? I want you to learn how to listen. I want you to learn how to do life with Jesus, and not just stuff for him. So, so what I've learned in my, in my journey uh, back from Burnham is being still is critical. I want us to be silent uh, for two minutes. I'm, I'm actually going to time this. Because um, I think for some, two minutes is going to feel like two years. And then others of us, because we, 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 we do want to hear the approval of our good, good fathers. We're like, we're going, I need more of this. But listen, we're going to do two minutes. Let me read something. Then I'm going to start the timer. And I just want you to sit. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of you would sit with, with hands out, palms out. Just, I want to receive, I want to hear whatever you have to say. The life inside of you, right? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and be still be. And let's listen for two minutes. The Father's so good. Um, I don't know what he whispered to you. You know what he whispered to me? Cool. I mean, really, it's cool. He said, uh, you're wanted. Most of my life, stuff attached to dad, stuff attached to mom, Tremendous fears of being unwanted. So when a good, good father in silence says, you're telling you, you want That's a good day. College students, if you're blowing through TFC and you're busy for Jesus, when you get out of here, it's going to get a whole lot busier. If you're doing 
a bunch of stuff for Jesus at TFC. Wait till you get out of here. Fix that now. Come on, fix that now. Learn to be with him. High schoolers, is TFC for you? I don't know. It's a pretty good place. It's in Tacoa. You heard about this? What a chill little town. What a great place to be silent, to listen. It has a falls. You heard about this? What a great place to go to listen, be silent. And it's a Christian college where there are professors and other students that may even help you listen and be still. Cement your identity in Christ. So here's what my challenge is, and I'll be done. Oh, I don't know if two minutes is enough. So before you leave out of here, sometime tomorrow, is that right? Would you go to the falls? And you might be with some people and just go, hey, give me, give me a couple minutes. And that'll be their signal that, hey, you're going to take two more minutes. You can even time yourself. Just go to the falls and just listen some more. Just be quiet some more. And I, I did this today. And when you're done, I want you to, you know, post that out. Hashtag it. TFC listen. Do a selfie. Post it out. A listen. TFC listen. Hashtag TFC listen. Am I good with that? Thanks so much. See you guys. worship through one more song.